understanding Hebbian synapses. Most AI people have heard that neurons which fire together wire together, and leave it at that. It turns out there is much, much more. This video and the next will dive a lot deeper into how Hebbian synapses can work together to perform useful pattern recognition and learning functions. Hebbian synapses are more generally called spike timing dependent plasticity. That is, synapse weights can be affected by the relative spike timings of the neurons they connect. I'll continue to call it Hebbian because spike timing dependent plasticity is such a mouthful. This video is part of a project to address a few simple AGI cases in a biologically plausible way. In the last video, I showed how incoming signals, which are rate encoded, might be interpreted in neurons and showed two ways to do it. In this video, I'll begin to show how spiking neurons interconnected with Hebbian synapses can recognize input patterns. Then we'll get to how synapses can learn and how they might represent useful knowledge. Recall that we're using a spiking neuron model which will emit a spike if the accumulation of input synapse weights of incoming spikes exceeds a threshold. This is substantially different and incompatible with any of the models used in typical AI learning applications, and that's the point. AI needs some new algorithms to achieve AGI, and I'm working with a fundamentally different approach. Let's look at the recognition problem from the destination first. What would we like our heavy and synapses to do? And then we'll work backwards to how we can make them do that. So here is the target for today. We have an array of neurons, some firing and some not, and we'd like to recognize a number of predetermined patterns of input firing. Our input neurons are the outputs of the rate decoder modules we created in the previous video, but could be from any sensory input. We have a number of target neurons and we'd like each to represent an individual input pattern, which should fire when that specific input pattern is received, but not fire otherwise. We would like our system to tolerate and compensate for small input errors. That is, if we present the input, the related output should fire on a perfect match. If there is no perfect match, then we repeat presentations of the input and the neuron which fires first wins. The sooner it fires, the smaller the error and the better the match we want recognition performance to be fast enough to be useful, and we're assuming that there's going to be multi-stage recognition. Remember from the last video that there is a color component module which lets you select a color and fires red, green, and blue neurons at corresponding rates. At first, you might think that you can just connect these to a set of recognition neurons and be all set, the way most AI apps do it. But when you consider a little deeper, with a spiking neuron model, this is impossible because you can't select synapse weights to make one of your output neurons fire with a spiking rate of 8 milliseconds, for example, but not fire on either 4 milliseconds or 12 milliseconds. That's why all the rate decoding complexity of the previous video is necessary in some form. So consider that we have neurons which are the outputs of a rate decoder module and we can think of these as bits either firing or not. Then I'll add a pattern recognizer module which can automatically add all the synapses all initialized with zero weights. Let's figure out what we want the synapse weights to be in order to recognize input patterns. 
Using this model means that any recognition mechanism, the necessary weights of the incoming synapses depends on the number of incoming bits in the pattern to be recognized. The number of recognition neurons, on the other hand, is arbitrary depending on the number of patterns we want to recognize. If we want a recognition neuron to fire, the sum of the positive incoming synapse weights must exceed 1 if it's to fire on the first occurrence of the pattern. It must exceed 0.5 if it's to fire on the second occurrence, etc. So if we have 10 inputs and have a pattern with 5 of them firing, the firing synapses need to have a weight of 0.2 so a perfect match will fire the output. Now we can set the weight for the non-firing neurons to negative 0.05 and the target neuron will fire progressively later with more bit errors. Suppose only four of the five neurons in the pattern fires. Then it will be two cycles to cause the target to fire. But if it's only three, it still takes two cycles to cause the target to fire. So there is no way to differentiate between a one bit error and a two bit error. This problem is worse with a larger number of inputs. If you have 100 inputs and 99 of them fire, it will take two cycles. If any number of inputs greater than half the number of inputs fires, then it will still take two cycles to fire and there is no way to tell the difference. So there is a significant asymmetry that the recognizer can differentiate the number of neurons firing when they shouldn't, but cannot differentiate neurons which are not firing when they should. To eliminate this problem, I replace each input neuron with two, one which fires if the input bit is true, and another which fires if the bit is false. So I modified the rate detector module from the previous video to add this feature, and also added a little synchronization so that all inputs arrive at the recognizer simultaneously. Now, the number of firing input neurons will always be equal to the total number of available inputs, and we can set the weight so that the bit errors can be differentiated equally whether the bit which is zero should have been a one or vice versa. There is a related issue which is also addressed by this solution. Now, not only can we differentiate between data which is one or zero, but also data bits which are unknown. If neither of the input pair fires, this input will have no effect on the recognition, though it will be somewhat slower. So we need to select our target synapse weights, a positive weight for a bit which is correct and a negative one for a bit which is incorrect. I wrote a small program which, given the number of inputs, would select weights to maximize the number of bit errors which can be differentiated. For a thousand inputs, here are the calculated values. Looking at the first line and recalling the maximum rate of firing is about 4 milliseconds. With a positive weight of 0 0.001 and a negative weight of minus 0.249, the perfect match will be recognized on the first spiking cycle, and up to three additional states can be recognized on three subsequent cycles. Interestingly, if you accept a greater delay in recognizing a perfect match, then you can discern a greater number of different error states. Also, there seems to be a maximum number of discernible states no matter how slowly the system runs. As it seems with all things related to spiking neurons, the more precision you want, the slower the network will run. So if we want to discern 10 different error states, we may have to wait over 80 milliseconds for the result. Further, the synapse weights get so small that noise issues are likely to predominate and prevent the network from functioning accurately. So to review how this entire network functions, the color component module creates input signals and you can select a color and it will set the spiking rates of the red, green, and blue component neurons as appropriate. 
These are connected to rate decoder modules, which measure the interspike timings and store the measured values in short-term memory. You can see that the three color decoders are completely asynchronous. Whenever requested, each of these decoders will output its value with neurons which spike appropriate to the stored content. All of the outputs are fully connected to the recognition neurons of the pattern recognizer module. A closer look at the synapses coming into one of these neurons shows the settings of the weights. This network is fully trained, so all the synapse weights have settled to their final target values. Here we can see that the network can recognize the color black. Here it recognizes the color blue, and here we'll give it the color cyan, which is a color which has not been learned and is significantly different from any of the learned colors and no output fires at all. Here we'll give it a darker blue, which is also not a learned color, and you can see that it takes longer to recognize this as blue because of the bit errors, and along the way the color is also close to black, so the neuron representing black also gets a partial charge but never actually fires. You can try this out for yourself by downloading the Brain Simulator from httpbrainsim.org, then open the Color Identifier Network from the library. In the next video, I'll describe the learning process in the Pattern Recognizer module. The Brain Simulator project is continuing to gain momentum, so be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and join the Facebook group to stay up to date with the latest developments and weekly releases. Also, please share this video with your colleagues and encourage them to join this community project so it can make even more progress towards discovering AGI. And as always, thanks for watching.